weight loss. Weight loss. Easy weight loss. Miracle diet drug. Miracle weight loss drug. You know those ads that promise some new pill will finally be your ticket to a bikini bod? The ones that feature impossibly fit celebs touting how easy and effortless it was to transform their physiques? A lot of people are losing a lot of weight and it seems so easy, especially big celebrities. Are they taking one of these new, uh, you know, shot of uh, Ozempic or Wagovi semaglutide is what the drug is. Well, I've got some not so feel good news for you. That magic weight loss cure might be more an illusion than solution. Damn it! As obesity rates continue to climb, with over 70% of Americans now overweight or obese, Big Pharma has been all too happy to portray themselves as the heroes of the epidemic, pumping out a never ending stream of diet drugs they claim can fix the problem. But peel back the layers of those flashy ads and Hollywood endorsements, and a very different story emerges. One where your health is a distant second to profits. The sad truth is, the $58 billion weight loss industry has no real interest in actually ending our so-called crisis. After all, curing us would kill their cash cow. So could it be that every new breakthrough is really just more of the same? Hype and promises carefully calibrated to keep the money machine whirring along? Today, we're digging into Big Pharma's playbook and how they may be taking advantage of our insecurities for profit at our expense. Stick around, I've got some eye-opening insights to share. Let's start with the poster drug for pharmaceutical weight loss, Ozempic. You've probably heard a lot about the drug Ozempic lately. Originally developed to help in the treatment of diabetes, the product's popularity exploded when it was discovered a side effect for users was dramatic weight loss. On the surface, it seems like a miracle worker. Pop a shot once a week and watch the pounds melt away, right? Not so fast. What the glitzy before and after ads posted by your favorite celebs won't tell you is that Ozempic was actually developed by Novo Nordisk over a decade ago for one purpose, to treat type 2 diabetes by regulating blood sugar. Helping diabetics better manage their condition is a noble goal, no doubt. But in recent years, as obesity levels climbed even higher, Big Pharma saw a profitable new opportunity. So Novo Nordisk began heavily marketing Ozempic off-label directly to non-diabetic consumers as an effortless weight loss drug, amplifying celebrity endorsements of their incredible 10 to 15% body transformation stories. Dolores, how long have you been on the Ozempic? <clears throat> uh, six weeks. Six weeks? Yeah, yeah that's kidding. the fast forward to Skinnyville. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. and Reunions no... in two weeks. Yeah. More hype meant greater demand, regardless of whether long-term efficacy studies backed the claims. Many people have high expectations when it comes to weight loss medications. However, the truth is that most individuals experience more modest results. According to FDA data, the average weight loss over 68 weeks is around 5 to 7%. Unfortunately, the potential side effects such as nausea, vomiting, constipation, and even pancreatitis are often downplayed or ignored by drug manufacturers to maintain the perception of their product as a risk-free and inexpensive option. As long as sales climb ever higher, who cares if a few consumers wind up disappointed, depleted, or injured right? After all, by then they've already got your money. This bait-and-switch approach was so lucrative that other pharmaceutical giants like Eli Lilly rushed to release their own GLP-1 analogs like Trulicity and Wegovy, dousing the obesity epidemic with false hopes of an easy fix purely for profit rather than public health. And around we go on Big Pharma's hamster wheel of hype. But perhaps the most insidious part of Ozempic's off-label promotion is how it's impacting availability for those who actually need the drug. As hype from influencers fuels skyrocketing demand among non-diabetics just trying to slim down, Novo Nordisk has struggled to keep Ozempic on pharmacy shelves. For diabetics dependent on the medication, shortages can wreak havoc on managing their condition. Yet Novo contends ramping up supply is easier said than done, given manufacturing complexities. Really? Because from where I'm sitting, it seems like creating artificial scarcity is a savvy business move, one that positions Ozempic as an even hotter commodity. The popularity of those drugs on social media and in clinics is soaring, and many are receiving help they need. But with inadequate supplies available, some people face a shortage in vital medication. Do what you gotta do, just make sure you save some medication for the people that actually need it. With shortages becoming the new normal, 
insurers have jacked up what patients pay out of pocket to exorbitant levels, sometimes $1,000 a month or more. That price tag may not seem so bad if you've got Ellen level wealth or income, but for average folks, especially those without insurance, Ozempic is increasingly out of reach as a viable treatment option, and diabetes doesn't discriminate. It impacts minorities and low-income communities the most. So in prioritizing profits through engineered hype and constraints on supply instead of broad patient access, these companies are disproportionately hurting the people who can afford to help the least. How's that for healthcare? When your quarterly earnings depend on addiction to a drug rather than cures, this is what you get. Of course, None of these fancy supply games would work without the all-important myth of Ozempic as a miracle cure. That's where Big Pharma's marketing wizards earn their keep, orchestrating hype that spreads faster than a TikTok challenge. Between lavish influencer deals and clever social media ads, mentions of Ozempic's supposed effortless results saturate feeds nationwide. When I look around this room, I can't help but wonder, is Ozempic right for me? <laughs> It was a social media phenomenon. This surge of beautiful people talking about losing weight with this medicine. Studies show positive early buzz is extremely persuasive, leading many to form biased beliefs before researching facts. And the facts, as usual, paint a different story. While initial weight loss averages around 15% over six months in clinical trials, less than half of participants maintain at least a 5% reduction after a year. Real-world results are often even more modest, yet these uncertainties seldom feature in glowing Instagram endorsements or ads featuring before and after photos that imply permanent transformation. Meanwhile, serious health risks like pancreatitis are downplayed or left out altogether when targeting vulnerable groups. We know obesity disproportionately impacts minority communities and low-income households already facing barriers to care. But do Ozempic commercials advertise its safety remains unproven in these demographics? Of course not. When your goal is generating hype instead of educating the public, selectively spreading only positive information becomes routine. The end result is misinformed. Consumers are more likely to gamble their well-being on empty promises, while companies cash in without accountability for caution or informed consent. Not exactly a model of ethics in healthcare, if you ask me. At this point, you may be wondering, where's the oversight in all this? Shouldn't some watch guard be keeping an eye on pharma's dubious practices? And that's where the story gets really troublesome. Because right now, inadequate regulations are enabling profiteering at our health's expense. You see, the FDA's approval of these drugs relies almost entirely on clinical trial data provided by the very companies seeking to make billions. I think I feel really afraid for what is happening to medicine. I feel really afraid at the loss of regulation over medications that can be risky. And I think we need to really rein that back so that we have appropriate safeguards in place to protect people. Yes, that's concerning. Without independent verification of results or long-term safety monitoring, there's little preventing spin. All it takes is massaging stats just enough to get the green light. Then once approved, a convenient loophole allows pushing drugs to new uses, aka lifestyle marketing in the case of Ozempic. But treating recreational weight control is an entirely different ballgame than managing a lifelong condition. Our bodies weren't engineered to last on pills long-term as substitutes for diet and exercise. Yet in their greed, pharma has aggressively pharmaceuticalized what were previously lifestyle issues opening the floodgates for a new class of at-risk patients. Where exactly is the FDA to reign in such a practice that bypasses scientific scrutiny? If regulators won't keep special interests from hijacking our health for profit, who will? Beyond practical effects, there are important ethical dimensions to consider in Big Pharma's weight loss business model. For one, promoting miracle pills as the answer glamorizes quick fixes while ignoring lifestyle's root causes of obesity epidemics. When a shot replaces addressing what's filling our carts or how little movement defines daily life, we miss the opportunity for sustainable wellness. By design, these blockbuster drugs are intended to shape lifetime customers, not temporary clients. Their interests lie not in cures, but in perpetuating the need for recurring revenue streams from the same patient base. Most concerning is the ethical cost of capitalizing on body insecurity. 
When companies thrive not by uplifting health, but by preying on doubt and dissatisfaction with the self, they commodify suffering for financial gain. True wellness stems from self-acceptance, not futile chasing of unattainable or temporary ideals. While the system is rigged to exploit, there are still practical steps consumers can take towards self-protection and well-being. First, cultivate a skeptical eye toward extraordinary health claims. Miracle cures seldom live up to the billing, as our overview of Ozempic shows. Learn to decode persuasive marketing tactics designed to override reason. Notice red flags like failure to discuss risks or long-term outcomes objectively. Companies depend on your willingness to believe, so approach new breakthroughs with caution instead of confidence. Second, prioritize advice from objective medical professionals over paid influencers. Doctors receive years of training to advise safely, while celebrities' ultimate goal is self-promotion and not your wellness. Real change takes commitment, not quick solutions. Well, that's it for today's video. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching.